Uh, the purpose uh, of uh, my sending out the media alert was to announce that I have decided to uh, recontest my seat of Fisher at the September 7 election following the approaches from many local people. I have to say that uh, I'm particularly proud to have been elected on eight occasions as the member for Fisher and uh, it's a great privilege to serve in the Australian Parliament. Uh, as Speaker, I endeavoured to bring about reforms to the Parliament to make the Parliament a place that all Australians could be proud of. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, Ashbygate affair in which uh, the LNP candidate, Mal Brough, and other LNP and Liberal Party figures were deeply involved meant that so far I've not been able to complete the reform process. What is particularly interesting is that Mel Brough, unlike some others adversely mentioned uh, by the judge, did not seek leave to appeal uh, the judge's adverse findings against him. I have to say I'm particularly proud of uh, the many achievements that so far I've been able to bring about for the Sunshine Coast, including recently the $46.8 million for the uh, the TAFE uh, uh, Health Centre, uh, Learning Centre, uh, Bruce Highway upgrades and also of course the $800,000 recently for the development of the Sunshine Coast Regional Tennis Centre uh, at Caloundra. I do want to place on record uh, that I am totally opposed to LMP plans to sell off the Sunshine Coast University Hospital which the community here on the Sunshine Coast expects to be a public hospital available uh, for local people. Uh, there is much more to be done in Fisher. Uh, we have a rapidly growing population and uh, certainly uh, we have needs in the area of infrastructure to meet the needs of our growing population. Uh, it is a great privilege to serve as the member for Fisher and I'm hoping to continue to receive the support of people uh, at the next election. I have to be honest though and say that um, uh, this is a David and Goliath effort. Uh, this is my most difficult election ever because I'm up against the major parties. But one of the reasons I'm standing is to provide real choice for local people. I'm happy to uh, answer a few questions. Uh, if any of you uh, have any questions, and I suspect that you might have one or two. Mr Slipper, you talk about your work to bring uh, the Parliament to be a place that people can be proud of, but what about the information exposed in the Federal Court about the content of text messages that you sent to staffers as a parliamentarian? Well, let me say to you that um, if uh, any of you uh, had your text messages uh, looked at, uh, I'm sure that uh, you wouldn't want necessarily the, the the uh, substance of them made public, but you also ought to note that you also ought to note that they were private text messages sent to someone some four months before he became a staffer in my office, someone who Inga and I considered to be a personal friend. Do you still think they were appropriate, though? Well, I mean, the thing is that uh, you can uh, look at your own messages that you would send. Uh, they were personal, private messages between two people who were friends and not between an employer and an employee. Do you give yourself any chance of retaining the seat, Mr Stubber? Well, as I said to you, it is a David and Goliath effort. Uh, every election is a challenge. Uh, you can't take the support of people for granted. I never have. Uh, I've uh, been elected on eight occasions. Uh, I've stood on nine occasions. Uh, and uh, I'm well aware of one, of one of the wonderful things about Australia is our democracy where every three years uh, members of parliament uh, uh, have their jobs, shall we say, re-advertised and uh, people are able to stand. And I think that's a really good thing because it means that as Australians, we live in a country that has freedom, stability and a way of life that makes us the envy of people throughout the world. People have the opportunity of choosing the government of their choice. And I think that that's what is one of the things that makes us truly the lucky country. By standing again, do you hope to keep the Ashby affair in the public uh, spotlight at least for another month or so? Look, um, the thing is that um, Mr Brough uh, was deeply involved uh, 
in the Ashby Gate affair. Uh, the federal judge made uh, adverse findings against him and against others. What is particularly significant is that while others sought to appeal the judge's adverse findings against them, Mr Brough did not seek to challenge the judge's adverse findings against him. People say you're running because you, you just want the money. Oh, look, that's an irrelevant consideration. Um, and um, uh, that um, suggestion is entirely inappropriate and incorrect. Who would you say you're directing preferences to? Preferences... Uh, uh, sorry, I wasn't quite sure where the question was coming from. Well, look, um, one doesn't decide what happens with preferences until nominations close. They have closed, but of course uh, those who have nominated uh, will not be announced until tomorrow and I'll be making the appropriate decisions at the appropriate time. I guess 20 years is a long time to give up in this sense. Well, it's a great privilege actually to serve um, in the Australian Parliament for more than 20 years. Uh, I have to say that um, it obviously uh, has a great impact on family and friends and parents and particularly the last 18 months have not been easy for Inga and me and my children and my parents and my, my parents-in-law and, uh, and my friends. Uh, but um, I really appreciate the support of my wife Inga and my entire family uh, and I'm happy to continue to serve the people of Fisher and the people of the Sunshine Coast in the Australian Parliament uh, if I'm privileged to uh, for the ninth occasion, be elected as the member for Fisher at the election on the 7th of September. Do you think the people of Fisher have lost confidence in you as their local member? Well, I mean, every three years, members of parliament, uh, shall we say, uh, reapply for their jobs. Uh, I'm very confident uh, to um, be judged by the people of Fisher. Uh, the messages that I get back from the community, particularly since the Justice Rarer's decision, is that people have seen through the, the, the plot that was set up against me. Um, but let me say, um, nobody can take anything for granted. Um, it's a great privilege to be the member for Fisher. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, serving local people and I'm hopeful of being given the opportunity of continuing to serve the people of Fisher uh, in the next parliament. Mr Silver, you face court in December on the allegations of misusing your cab charge documents. If you were successful in winning the seat again, what would you do during that time? Would you stand aside for the trial? Well, I think you've really got to look at the facts of this matter. You've got something called the Minchin Protocol, and lots of members of parliament, in fact, have disputes with the Department of Finance over the use of entitlements. I mean, frankly, uh, the entitlements regime is quite a maze, and so when the then Senator Minchin had to repay money, he set up something called the Minchin Protocol, which meant that the disputes between members of parliament uh, and um, the Department of Finance are dealt with administratively. Uh, and, uh, for instance, uh, Tony Abbott recently uh, uh, misused um, uh, Comcar and, uh, and airfare entitlements, uh, and he was just able to repay that money, close to $10,000, no questions asked. Why do you Peter, say you can, I, can I finish my question? Can I finish my answer, please? Uh, Peter Reith was allowed to repay $50,000, no questions, no questions asked. And there are hundreds of instances of members of parliament who have disputes with the Department of Finance and those matters are handled administratively. I wrote to the Department of Finance uh, on four occasions with a view to being given equivalent treatment to that extended to Mr Abbott and Mr Reith and, and, and many others. And I really don't understand why uh, perhaps a quarter of a million dollars has been spent investigating my travel and they're prepared to spend another $70,000 on a seven-day trial and uh, over a figure of $964, which is disputed. Now, obviously, I'm not going to talk about the substance of the case, but all I'm seeking... But, but, but all I'm, all I'm seeking is equivalence of treatment. Now, what was your question, sorry? Do you have a theory, then, on why your case has gone this far when others haven't? Well, it's very interesting uh, <laughs> that the um, investigation into me um, occurred shortly after I accepted the position of Speaker of the House of Representatives. So do you see a vendetta here? 
Well, it's not for me to say that there's a vendetta, but let me say that it's up to each of you to draw your own conclusions. If Mr. Mr. Bruff goes on to win this uh, seat of Fisher, could the Ashby affair still come back to haunt him? Well, there is a complaint uh, made by Mr. Graham Perrett, the member for Morton, to the Australian Federal Police about Mr. Bruff's involvement with former staff members in uh, downloading my diary. Um, that is, of course, a matter for the Australian Federal Police, and I imagine that the Federal Police uh, will look at that matter, as I understand they said that they will, uh, once the applications for leave to appeal lodged by Ashby and Ashby's then solicitor Harmer uh, have been determined by the Federal Court. How would you characterise Mr Bruff's role over the last couple of years? Sorry? How would you characterise Mr Bruff's role? Well, I, su I, su I suppose considering that um, when I had my elected office in Caloundra, Mr Bruff came to me as a constituent uh, and I assisted him uh, and signed him up into the then Liberal Party. I'm a bit disappointed by Mr Bruff's uh, actions. Uh, in particular, uh, he sought to stack me out uh, as the LNP member for Fisher. I've been a member of the party for decades. Uh, and he signed a whole lot of people up simply for the purposes of uh, gaining pre-selection. You ought to remember, of course, that prior to the merger, uh, Mr Bruff, uh, and maybe it was after the merger, he referred to the LNP as a party built on lies and deceit and as an abomination. Peter, I don't imagine it's been an easy 18 months for yourself. Did you counsel Peter to rerun in this seat or did you want to sort of back away from politics? Um, I'm supporting Peter in his decision to go forward. Um, one of the things I did want to say is, you know, the last 18 months have been extremely difficult. Made quite difficult in some respects by actually you guys. I've had helicopters come down over my house. I've had telephoto lenses looking into our home. I've had somebody, I think, might have been from one of the local TV stations who actually put their hand on the bonnet of my car in my garage and caressed the bonnet, which I found rather strange. They're obviously trying to check to see whether the temperature on the car was hot or cold. And, and we saw the hand marks so, because, because there was some dust on the bonnet. We hadn't cleaned the car. I've had a situation where this was a direct hit on our marriage. Our marriage is real. I have stuck by Peter. I love Peter. There's so many things you guys don't understand about him. He's made some mistakes, yes. But he's actually a really nice, decent, kind-hearted guy. What and if that's a nice I'm answering thing to say. the question. So, I, you just don't really understand him, and I think that's really sad. So, um, so dealing with the media has been very difficult. Um, so I do want to say to people that our marriage is real. I've had to listen to rumours spread throughout this community about how our marriage is not real, that we've divorced and all those sorts of things. So. I think one of the reasons I'm also standing here is to tell you and to tell the people of the Sunshine Coast and Fisher that I am standing by my husband, that I do love my husband, that I took my vows seriously when I married him seven years ago on the 12th of August 2006. So that's one of the things I guess I really want to say to you. Yes, I am supporting him. He has made some mistakes, but he is a really good guy. And through all of this, through the hell through our marriage being targeted specifically, he has continued, and I don't know how he's done it, to go out day after day and represent the people of the electorate of Fisher. Now, he just got 46.8 million for the Sunshine Coast Health and Wellbeing Project. Now, how many local MPs have got that amount of money for a project? He's still been fighting for the Bruce Highway. He's fought for the tennis centre. So it goes on. Regardless, how many people out there would go out and put up with the absolute rubbish that he's put up with every day doing what he has to do and getting money in for this electorate and for the Sunshine Coast because he wanted to actually help the Sunshine Coast.